Hey, my brothers and sisters. Well, God bless each and every one of you. I'm just coming on here to show you this article from businessinsider.com on the Russian doomsday machine. It says Putin's nuclear doomsday machine could trigger 300 foot tsunamis, but the worst effects might come from the fallout. So then they show this picture from the movie Deep Impact. Remember that? And a uh, very interesting article because they're dancing around the truth, friends, and they're questioning whether or not Putin even has this uh, weapon, and I'm sure he does. And, um, you know, let's not forget about the Russian spy ship that was sitting off the coast of Virginia, uh, how many times has it been there? And then we got told that Russia had their submarines that were stealth and they were up on the coasts of the Gulf and the East Coast and that they bragged on how they went undetected. Well, this article's leaving out some very important information. They're kind of poopon that this is any kind of problem but I can promise you it is, and I will tell you more after we read this. But it says, Russian President Vladimir Putin recently said Russia was developing a nuclear-powered torpedo that could detonate a massive nuclear weapon. Such device could create a 300-foot tsunami if exploded in the right location, take note of that, the right location, and could rain long-lasting radioactive fallout on a coastal target. Experts have described the hypothetical weapon as quote unquote the doomsday device saying it could spread unprecedented and long lived radioactive fallout <clears throat> but one researcher said such a weapon would be stupid as it had great this this is poor english okay as it did greatly limit its damage compared with an airburst okay who's this researcher he came to speak proper english all right, I think it's, it's almost like we're being made fun of, guys. Really, truly. Um, oh, by the way, you do know that Angela Merkel is kind of siding with Russia, correct? Yeah, and when we read about, uh, well, I don't know if we've covered it yet, but in Ezekiel 38, it says that Ashkenaz is one of the tribes that will go with the king of the north all right and many say that ashkenaz is germany and isn't it interesting that um it has <laughs> you know ashkenazi i mean ashkenazi okay i'm just saying go look up where it's at in the word it's a-s-h-k-e-n-a-z and then sometimes it has an i on the end very interesting <clears throat> and i'll give you a big clue about what's what but anyway i find that very interesting that she publicly says she's not getting involved with that um that really she's not supporting israel and um that she's Part of the part of Germany is really calling to go back to get Russia back into the G8. Okay, I just find it all very interesting. Um, you know, if anybody should be doing repairs with their relationship with the nation Israel, I would think it would be Germany of all people. But did we not read uh, in our studies? Of Jeremiah in the final days of Babylon that that it would stir up the kings of the Medes which is the Aryans guys just saying okay and what did we just have in Georgia did you hear about that in Georgia um, a little itty bitty town in Georgia they had some white supremacist people trying to you know do a de demonstration and spewing their garbage and uh, 
they put a fence between them and I, I guess it stayed pretty calm but they had 400 federal police and local police and state police and they had all kinds of military equipment there and everything Black Hawk helicopters were there some little itty bitty town in Georgia um, you know if people wouldn't come back out and respond to these people there was only like a dozen guys that were doing this protest but then Black Lives Matter gets out there and then people that just want to be out there I mean if nobody would show up to protest against them they wouldn't do it anymore you know what I'm saying like you give them attention and that's what they want they want chaos they want violence so they want to incite it so anyway yeah the spirit of the Medes yes the Aryan look go look it up it means Aryan okay so anyway back to this article um, so they're referring back when President Putin did his big, you know, nuclear show off on March the 1st of all his new wep new weapons. And um, it says that uh, it would go to great depths and move faster than any submarine or boat and have hardly any vulnerabilities for the enemy to exploit and carry massive nuclear ordnance. It's really a fantastic it, it is really fantastic, he said, adding there's simply nothing in the world capable of withstanding them. Okay, so it, I believe they have it. I, I do. And um, like I said, we have been infiltrated, guys. Uh, there, is, there is a confederacy, and God says there is, and he says, you know, go not after them and fear them not. Um, you know, don't walk in their way. And unfortunately, many Christians ignorantly are walking in this way and crying out for it. They don't understand that, you know, what's leading the nations. They don't understand that this is a Luciferian cabal and that it's very demonic. And they're bringing their father in. And unfortunately, you know... They just get their mouthpieces out there that aren't going to do anything but talk just to appease the people verbally. That's all they're going to do. They're never going to carry through on anything they ever say. Just like Donald Trump said he was done with abortion. It would not happen anymore. And then he signs that budget that gave Planned Parenthood, I think, more money than we've ever given them. It's all lies because they got to have the sacrifices guys and it's going to bring some very demonic demonic things upon this nation and judgment okay there's one thing god's going to do is he's going to judge the blood of the innocent and i'm going to go into that with you here in a minute but i just wanted to show this this article to you i will leave the link to it in the description box so you can go read it for yourself but it goes on and they're talking about whether or not what kind of damage this thing would do okay and whether it really could create this 300 foot tsunami and um, they're saying that if the Russian government reportedly leaked a diagram of such a weapon in 2015 that suggested it would carry a 50 megaton nuclear bomb as about as powerful as SAR Bama the largest nuclear device ever detonated nuclear physicists say such a weapon could cause a local tsunami though they question its purpose and effectiveness given the far more terrible destruction that nukes can inflict when detonated above ground well i'll tell you why here and it says um but his doomsday de device could be terrifying and could cause great devastation below the ocean sur surface this is the U.S. underwater nuclear test of the 1940s and 50s, including Operations Crossroads, Baker, and Hard Track 1, Wahoo, demonstrated why. These underwater fireballs were roughly as energetic as bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945. In the test, they burst through the surface, ejecting pillars of seawater more than a mile high while rippling out power 
full shock waves. Some warships staged near the explosions were va vaporized, others were tossed like toys in the bathtub and sank, while a few sustained cracked hulls and crippled engines. Notably, <clears throat> the explosions roughly doubled the height of the waves to nearby islands flooding inland areas. Guys, my dad was there. He he witnessed this. Okay. Um, my dad was out in the Pacific. And I do believe it's the same one that they're showing here. There were several. You know, they never even warned. My dad was on the islands. But they never even warned him. He was in the Bikini Atoll. And they never even warned him. You know, all of a sudden he's on duty. And he's just standing there and he sees a mushroom cloud. <laughs> they don't even tell him. You know, and so I'm sure he got exposed to radiation. And, um... He got a, oh, he got a little award for it. It's hanging on the wall in there. Oh, well. So, anyway, they're talking about this. And then they're talking about, well, you know, well, they're debating back and forth whether or not this would create um, an earthquake and a tsunami and all that. Well, it would. And, you know, here he says, that they just touch on it briefly, but they say, taking advantage of the rising seafloor amplification effects, tsunami waves reaching 100 meters in height, about 330 feet are possible, Richardson said. Richardson and other experts have also pointed out that a nearshore blast from this type of weapon could suck up tons of ocean sediment, irradiate it, and rain it upon nearby areas, generating a catastrophic radioactive fallout. Well, I'm going to tell you what. If they have these, which I'm sure they do, and with what we've been told, allowed to know, look, there, there is a crack, a rift, in the Atlantic that is a fault line and it's already weak if they've laid nukes in there the whole eastern coast all the way around to the Gulf the Caribbean will experience some significant tsunami okay and some experts have already said that the sea the, the sea floor there in that uh, where that earthquake plateau there is, is weakening. And they don't know how much longer it's going to hold. Okay? So, you don't know what to believe there, but you could see this would be a very strategic place, and it would affect the whole coast and the Gulf Coast. Alright? Remember? We just had, what, back in March, was it March? We had the fake tsunami warning that went all the way up from Maine all the way down the East Coast. People in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina even got it. <laughs> okay, which is on the east side of the mountains of the Appalachians, guys. They got it. Um, let's see. Then... Let's see, it went all the way down to Florida, into the Gulf Coast. So, you know, and they were like, oops, it was a mistake. Didn't mean to send this out. Same kind of thing they did with the missile, uh, you know, alert that there was an incoming nuclear warhead coming into Hawaii. Okay, so something's up, guys. So anyway, I'll leave this in the, uh, this article in there because... This is really what it's all about. No, I'm telling you. They're going to do something. And that is biblical. That there will be a tsunami. Okay. Babylon gets um, destroyed by a tsunami. Now, that we know will happen in the final Babylon. But God already says, Jesus said, the seas and the waves roaring. The earth is already in peril. Okay. <laughs> we're in deep trouble brothers and sisters so there is a judgment coming and why well you know everybody's talking about these crimes that is going on I mean I know there's this big hubbub that there's this video out there who knows if it's what it is okay I'm not going to watch it about Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin um, look I, I can I am not shocked to find out that the majority of these people in power and elites are pedophiles. Okay, I'm sorry. That does not shock me one bit. 
and there is an epidemic of pedophilia um, unfortunately I got to learn about it very young age and it just seemed like that little town that we I was in I mean I grew up in the city but I was in a small town that was within a big city it was a small suburb and it was its own little town inside of a big city we were surrounded by a big city but this little town I'm telling you they were everywhere I mean as a child we couldn't walk to the pool we couldn't walk to the store and they would just come out of the woodwork I mean and that was the before all this technology and the internet and you know there wasn't all the materials that would entice people to feed that appetite as it does today and it was bad then for whatever reason the Lord uh, let me learn to recognize a serpent all right and they are pedophiles they are molesters you know that's a serpent they're subtle they're cunning and they're snakes all right and so it does not shock me one bit but I got news for you you know there's a price to pay, to pay because God talks about the Shadim, the demons, okay? He talks about them in Deuteronomy, and he also talks about them in Psalm 106. And he mentions them here in verse 37, because he's talking about, you know, how Israel, this whole psalm here is talking about Israel and their, you know, their rebellion and their, their, I'm sorry, but, you know, we are also considered Israel. We're spiritual Israel, and we really are no different. So, just a sec. Sorry about that, guys. So, basically what they did was they sacrificed their children <clears throat> and to demons. And that's the Shadim. Okay, it gets here in verse. Yes, right here. Uh, <clears throat> this is talking about how in the wilderness they rebelled against the Moses' spirit. And um, it says, So that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the nations. Yeah these nations that they're talking about here they were they were supposed to destroy those nations that were mixed with the fallen angels of the the giants okay this was the Philistines and you know all the names of the nations they were told to go in and destroy but but they didn't they did not destroy the nations like God told them to and so these hybrids remained okay and these were the ones that were got to understand the offspring of the of the fallen angels the giants when they died they had their souls were not returned back to god they were not sanctified souls of god so these these are demonics they're still in the earth today they plague us we deal with them this is what we deal with and so when they did not destroy the nations like they were told and commanded, and this is the only reason why God told them to, de kill, to destroy them. He would say destroy everything, either livestock, everything, because they were mixed with fallen angels, okay? But, and he says, but they did not, you know, destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the nations. You know, they started intermixing and taking their ways and learned their works, yes, and they served their idols. This is where all the Baal worship, all the demon worship, all the all the goat worship, all that stuff comes from. And they became a snare unto them. Yes. It, it, it was their downfall. Every single time, nothing new under the sun, brothers and sisters. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto demons. Okay. This is this word in the Hebrew is it is Shadim. Alright, it's the same as devils. And they shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. 
this was when they they threw their they they gave their children to Moloch. All right, Molochism. It was human sacrifice of their sons and their daughters. And I'm sorry, but this is modern day abortion, friends. It's truly what it is, and the beast has to have blood. And there's a judgment for this. Okay, there is. And um, you know, thank you Jesus that you forgive us for our sins that we do in ignorance that we did not realize what we were doing if any of us had a had that a hand in that you know we were lied to we were misinformed uh you know we might have even known in our hearts it was wrong but we did not understand to the extent of what this was and it is this but because we continue to do it and there has been um a lot of blood could you just imagine friends if the innocent blood of the unborn and the children and children that are here okay if that were dumped into the streets what our cities would look like full of blood it would be horrible horrible it would be horrific and I'm gonna tell you any nation that does not care about the unborn well then there's not going to be any caring about the children that are born okay i know everybody flips out and they'll hear these stories it'll happen it happens quite a bit you'll hear these stories about a woman who put her baby in the trash can the dumpster or buried it or did something to it and we think that's just horrible but i can tell you that abortion is just as horrible if not more i mean because those babies get ripped to pieces and when there's no respect for the sanctity of life in the womb in the most the most safe place in the world that a that a human being could be is in the womb and when there's no sanctity to that then I apologize for that again so there is judgment for this my friends as a nation there will be you know those of us that are covered by the blood of Jesus and we've repented and we are following his commandments we are covered we are covered from this judgment but it doesn't mean that it won't happen around us okay but God is good God promises us protection he doesn't tell us that we won't go through any trials or tribulations but you know unfortunately you know God is forgiving but he also will let us live out the consequences you know that much I do know so this is demons is Shadim so I'm gonna tell you something as long as innocent blood is shed in this nation then this demonics is going to increase and increase and increase and then the children that are here are not safe okay especially the normal children there's not there's some children that are just aren't so normal my friends they're created okay whether you want to believe that or not um all you gotta do is just go look up actual scientific research on what they're doing with genetics cloning organs you know look they want to poop on this you know the united states back in the 80s i believe it was there was like an expose on satanic child sacrifice and murders okay and it was getting starting to get exposed and then it got all hushed up and covered over and said it was just fake news okay there was children that were at a daycare that were tortured that were it was horrific what they were going through they were being sexually abused there were satanic rituals well now we're finding out my friends that it really is true but the problem is is that it goes all the way up the chain to the very very elite and wealthy okay so we're in the last days my friends God's not gonna put up with this anymore 
He's really not. And the earth is in trouble. It's in big trouble. And we know that that six trumpet war is coming. Um, you know, if you, let's go to the six trumpet. Let's just go there real quick. I'm not going to keep you here long. I'm going to let you go because I am not feeling good. So we're going to go to Revelation and we're going to talk, read about the trumpets, the sixth trumpet. That is the war, the war that comes after the locust army. Okay, so I'm going to look up the trumpet. Okay. Uh, I think it's Revelation 9. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Let me just go to Revelation 9. I know that's where it is. So, just remember, the fifth trumpet sounds. The locust army comes out. You know, guys, I think there's already, this is already happening to a degree. I truly do. I think the whole kit and caboodle will be coming out, but this is happening. I think it's got a lot to do with ISIS. I think it's already happening in the Middle East. Our government is all is all part of this. So, remember, this happens first. That fifth trumpet, the locust army. Then comes uh, the sixth trumpet. Let's see, I think it's in Revelation 11. Where's the sixth trumpet? Sixth angel. Let's do that. <clears throat> and we're going to look at the trumpets. Okay. Oh, I was just there. So sorry, guys. I am not feeling good. Okay, so we have the fifth angel that sounds and the locust army comes out now you got to realize that once this once this part fully takes place this is a shifting into another dimension the supernatural will start to happen so there's like a there's like a molding from the fifth into the sixth it will merge all right and once we hit the sixth angel here it won't be long at all before Satan is revealed, okay? And it says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. This had everything to do with what we were reading in Jeremiah, okay? That's a whole study on itself. But this has got to do with that northern army also. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Now remember, many died in the third trumpet from the bitter waters. And um, the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand. I heard the number of them. This is your northern army. This is your sixth trumpet war. Now we're going to go back over to, uh, we'll see. The first, second, and third trumpets. I'm going to show you something. How we know Russia has a lot to do with this. Okay. Um, I know many don't want to believe that, but it's quite obvious who the king of the north is. Okay. I, I'm just saying. There's no other superpower up there. Okay. Now, yes, he has his bands. Okay. He comes, the king of the north um, you know, Gog and Magog, he comes with his bands. So, yes, that's, you know, all those others that are mentioned there. But I also told you that in Isaiah 7, it starts in Isaiah 7, and it goes on down, I think, through chapter 10. And then Obadiah talks about this confederacy. It talks about Ephraim and Manasseh betraying Judah. It's all in the leadership, guys. It's a major betrayal. Of the people in the in the land of Israel in the Middle East and in the Europe and the United States it's a cabal it's all over the world and though they are the Chaldeans <laughs> you know that go into Jerusalem and will it's an international city deemed by the United Nations which is nothing but a bunch of Luciferians Okay? That's why they're so... You can always tell. They're, they're bloodthirsty. They want war, war, war. You know? And they just tout that trumpet all day long. And one day they're going to get it. You know? 
and that will be the deadly wound. That sixth trumpet will be the deadly wound. But I want to show you something here. All right. Now, God is doing something, and when this first angel sounds, there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Okay? Now, you know that those um, locust army we just read about in the fifth trumpet, they're not touching, they're touching people. They're not touching the earth. These touch the earth. And this sounds like to me like um, debris, meteors, and it could even be uh, hailfire missiles also. Okay? Um, but I do believe this has got to do with the sun, guys. Because when this happens, something's going to happen. I, and we're so close. I mean, something's, something is definitely going on with this shockwave. The radiation is totally inundating the earth. The, the magnetosphere is going crazy. And um, we are in a debris field. We are. And I do believe that this will be like fireballs coming down from heaven. And why does it, why is it mingle with blood? Because this is about to start judgment on the earth. Okay? And the blood is the judgment. Okay? Just as when Cain killed Abel, Abel's righteous blood cried out from the earth. Mm -hmm. For judgment? Yes. So, you know, if the earth is facing the sun and there's something coming from that direction, uh, you can just see this could, this could scorch the earth. And that's basically what it's talking about. And then the second angel sounded as if it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea came blood. You know, um... This is really interesting because this is in a third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed. So it's some great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. You know, this could be an asteroid. Um, it could even be volcanism, but it sounds like a, a giant meteorite to me. Okay. And then we get here. And it says, and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. This is very interesting because this means like toxic poison. Okay, bitterness. Bitterness, toxic. Um, that's pretty much the spiritual condition of the world right now. I can tell you that. But this is capitalized. So it's telling you it is a, you know, it's a proper name. All right, it's, it's a name of something. And what's really interesting is in the Russian language, this word is Chernobyl, which was the same as that place in Russia that had the, the nuclear meltdown. And to this day, no one lives there. How interesting is that? And that happened in the 80s. Hmm. I'm just saying. I think the writing's on the wall. Okay, so it's of a uncertain der derivation. Wormwood is a type of bitterness, a calamity. Wormwood. Well, it's only mentioned in the Greek here, but it's poison. Okay, so whatever it is, that always made me wonder too. Um, this also could be something that man made friends that's up in this you know, they're putting all these um, satellites and secret mission you know secret thing payloads that they're putting on these missiles we really have no idea what they're doing we'd probably really be shocked to see what's up there um, you know one of these things could fall that's full of plutonium I just don't doubt that they've got weapons up in the heavens, guys. They're going to pull these things out uh, that are just mind-blowing, probably, to what real technology they have. So, remember when Russia uh, supposedly was going to put that star up in star satellite, and it was supposed to reflect all this light and stuff? I mean, they say it failed, 
But how do we know what's up there? You know, I'm just saying. It could be full of plutonium. You know, we just don't know. But uh, I do, it says, and wormwood and many, the waters became wormwood, okay? And a third part of the waters became wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And it's toxic poison, okay? The word is pecrano, pecrano, make bitter. Um, this is this is the spiritual condition of, hum, of of humanity today, especially in the United States, my friends. This is, is I mean, road rage. People are angry. People are flipping out. Um, tempers. People are not logical. They're losing their minds. I do believe technology is playing a big part of that. I believe things that are happening to the earth are playing a part of that. But it's just very interesting. So I'm just trying to bring to your attention that many are going to die in the days before the revealing of Satan. Okay? And something happens here in Revelation 8, 12 when the fourth angel sounds and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as the part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise well, that's all describing what hap happens in the sixth seal right these are the trumpets the, the seals are the timing the trumpets are like the warning the warning of what's coming God's, why is God allowing this? Because he's pleading with humanity to return to him. This is how God pleads before he throws down wrath. Okay? And this is going to be part of the woes. So something happens in the heavens. Alright? Where the sun's smitten. Third part of the sun is smitten. Third part of the moon. And third part of the stars. Now, this could be volcanism, because that would go along with the fifth trumpet with the locust army coming out. Um, but something happens in the heavens, okay, whether it's, it's, whether it's smoke or whether it's some kind of an obstruction. No one really knows. And it says, and behold, beheld, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound yes because this will be full on demonic possession and Satan will be uh, coming in to heal that deadly wound from the sixth trumpet war where a third of men mankind humanity of the population is slain so it just says many died of the bitter waters and um you know, there is something going on in space, guys. It's, it's, it's coming. I can't give you a date. I, I just know that the, the word is true and it's, it's coming. Okay. And there's just one way to be prepared. And that's to be, for us to be prepared with Jesus Christ. The true Jesus Christ. So then you have, after that third part of the sun, the moon, and the stars are smitten. Then you see the fifth angel sounds, and he sees a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And that's when the locusts come out. And they are given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. These are demons, my friends. They manifest. Okay, and this is where we know these are not normal locusts because it tells it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So they can't touch anyone that's sealed by God, that's covered by the blood of Christ that's here. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was at the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Yeah, it gets so bad that people want to commit suicide and they can't. Knowing people want to die and they can't. 
death shall flee from them. Okay? And then it goes on to describe these appearance of these locusts. But what I'm trying to point out to you here is that this locust army here really kind of lines up with something that we are seeing but is unseen okay and uh, it's in the Middle East it's what's happening in Syria Iraq all over the Middle East it's like this boogeyman okay I'm just saying and I do believe that to some degree they're here. I do believe it has to do with artificial intelligence. I really truly do, but I do not believe this pit has been completely opened yet. But it's coming. And it's got everything to do with those demons that they've sacrificed children to. It's the same spirits, my friends. Same spirits. Well, I don't want to keep you here long. I just wanted to go over this with you. I know I had something else to go over with you, but I'm not feeling good, so be staying in the Word, brothers and sisters. Be staying prayed up. Um, I know something is shifting spiritually, and uh, it's been going on for a while, but boy, it really has been picking up some speed in the last couple days, so... You know, let's stay wrapped in the word and stay in prayer. Be covering your families, your neighbors. Be praying and repenting for our nation. Pray for the leaders because they are really kind of, you know, we really have no idea what evils they're being subjected to. And, um, and there are good people somewhere in the government. I'm sure there are. God has people place where he needs them so just keep the faith brothers and sisters I pray you all stay well may the Lord keep you and protect you and bless you love to you all God bless